Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drag Queen Gaming, and so you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of uh, Roderick's Path, Heart of Amethyst. So, my partner's sleeping behind me, so I'm gonna keep it down a bit. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Sir Otto points towards a merchant that was happily selling his grilled fish. Oh, that's right, the codex. Okay, back. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. But the food was so heavy that it made me feel really tired all of a sudden. So I rested my head on the counter for a split second, the next thing I know, my beautiful painting is gone. Hmm, sounds like someone poisoned his food with droplets of valerian, a very strong herb that induces sleep. Luckily for me, I saw him in the corner of my eye, a sneaky bastard that had stolen it. And you saw who did it? Only the back of him. I didn't get a good look. It sounds like they had it all planned from the start. But that does make me wonder. Is that guy from the food stall related to the theft in some way? You should probably interrogate him, just in case. Ask about the thief. What did he look like? What do you mean? The person who stole your painting, what did he look like? Did he have white fur like me? Was he short? The tiger puts his paw on his chin and looks up, trying to remember any possible detail. Then his eyes light up and he points to my cloak. Well, I didn't get a good look at him, but I know for one thing for sure. The thief had that exact same cloak. The same color and everything. Are you? Certain. Yes, completely sure. Hmm, that's quite interesting. I mean, there's always the possibility those idiots are involved. But since Sir Otto is so sure of what he saw, it might be worth it to go try and talking to those assholes. After all, only five people own these cloaks. Hugo made them himself when he formed the gang. One, one for me, one for Pat, one for Lewis, and the other for Luna. The last one for him. So yeah, their involvement is entirely possible if Sir Otto is right. Although, I honestly hope they're not. After what happened yesterday, I don't want to see Pat's face. And Hugo could be there too. It's a box I don't want to open. So please, goddesses, if you really are real, please don't let those idiots be involved in this. Alright, I think I'm done for now. Seems like I have a lead. I happily announced to Sir Otto. He doesn't look too sure about my, new, about my newfound confidence. A lead? But I told the same thing to that knight. He said that was not helpful. Again, Roderick's social skills surprise me. It's fine, Sir, Adichu Sir Adichuchi. Uh, you have nothing to worry about. The white fox is on the case. I'll bring back your painting, I promise. I am um, sure, fighting. The tiger says with his fist up, making me wonder if that's supposed to make me feel better. But it doesn't matter, it's probably a feline thing. So, I'm off, Sir Otto. Be careful with the rest of your cargo, and don't eat anything suspicious. If you're hungry, buy a fish and grill it yourself. Sir Otto didn't get to say anything else as I happily jogged towards the food stall. I'm ready to put my low street my low street skills to good use and for a good cause for the first time. After bribing the vendor and sweet talking him to give me information, I found out that he indeed put some valerian water into the fish. He also confirmed that Hugo is involved. Unluckily for me, so now I just need to find that idiot. A task that shouldn't be too hard, since I know where their hideout is. As a matter of fact, I'm standing in front of a certain abandoned building which is used to hide all the stolen goods. My hand is a little shaky, as seeing Hugo is the last thing that I wanted to, wanted to do. But I'm doing this for a good cause, so I gather all the courage that I can muster and perform the secret knocking. A silly code that Hugo came up with to make sure only members of the gang entered his place. I take a deep breath and wait for the door to unlock, which takes a few minutes, but it eventually does. The inside of this abandoned building hasn't changed one bit. The walls are as broken as always, but most of the holes in them are covered by many ripped sheets and banners that we had stolen. The light still manages to enter through some gaps on the roof and walls. The floor creaks with every step I take, and a smell of dust is ever so present. I look around the house, and right in the middle, sitting on his homemade throne, is the king of our gang, Hugo. My eyes must be deceiving me. I never thought I would see your pretty face ever again. Hugo is a red and white husky with a curly tail and a nasty, nasty scar on the left side of his face, which he covers with his hair. The feeling is mutual. After you left me to die, I never thought I would see you again. The dog laughs at my sharp response, clearly not taking my anger seriously. That's per usual. Second, y'all. Oh, come on, White. You can't possibly still be mad about such a silly mistake. Pat just got a little scared. Can you blame the poor guy? Besides, I made sure he learned his lesson. Isn't that right, Pat? 
A small jackal steps out of the shadows with a submissive look on his face. He looks at us with his head lowered and his tail tucked between his legs. Y yes I learned my lesson. See? He's so sorry about it. How can he still be mad at a face like that? Hugo has a smile on his muzzle the whole time, trying to diffuse any sort of bad blood between me, Pat and me. Pat, you can go. Give the adults some privacy. Yeah, whatever. Pat steps into his corner again, vanishing into the dark as quickly as he came. Hugo, on the other hand, stands up from his seat and then walks towards me, closing the distance between us. So, to what do I owe this pleasure? I've really missed you. Hugo places his paw on my cheek, sending a shiver down my spine. A familiar touch that I used to love, but after what happened, it scares me. I slap his hand away and keep a stone hard, stone hard composure, even as if I, even, even, even as if I feel extremely tiny compared to the big male. I see you still have it in you, that fire I like so much. Cut the crap, Hugo. You know I'm not here for a pretty, for a petty reunion. It's a shame. I would have invited you to eat something. He gets closer and takes a step back. I repeat this until my back touches a wall. Oh. Wow, that's a- holy shit, that's a good piece of art. Dog puts his left paw beside my head and uses his right paw to lift my chin, forcing me to look into his blue eyes. Talk, puppy. I'm all ears. I feel my hands sweating, my heartbeat rising and lungs getting out of my chest. Hugo always had this effect on me. He knows how to hit the right spots to make me dance in the palm of his hand. It's so frustrating. If I had a gold coin every time you shit your pants whenever you face a new challenge, I would probably be richer than the king himself. He's right. I can't be scared all the time. I need to grow some balls. Oh. God, this is a beautiful art. Holy shit. I look at Hugo dead serious, not being intimidated by any more and say, I'm here for the painting you stole, Hugo. Give it back. Oh, my puppy works for that royal trash now? Should I call you Sir Ellie now? Call me whatever you like, Hugo. That painting is important and you can't have it. Says who? Says me! Hugo seems a little taken aback by my strong resolve, but he's playing his cards well, because, it allow, because he doesn't allow himself to be intimidated either. You know, this is what I like about you. You're such a strong little puppy, and that strength used to be mine when you were by my side. So, tell me, isn't there something I could do for you to come back to me? Hugo, stop it, it's not like that anymore. Aw, oh, come on, puppy, can't you give this dog another chance? I promise I'll be better this time. Just remember all those good times we spent together. Are you really going to waste all those years in a stupid painting? I mean it. Back off. We're done. Oh, are we? Because I'm just starting. Hugo's body heat was getting more and more unbearable. He was so close to me that I could feel his hot breath hitting against my nose. His scent is just as I remember, strong and masculine, the fading aroma of powder. Just one kiss, puppy, and you'll be mine again. You'll see. As Hugo was closing in on the gap between our lips. Uh-oh. Yeah. A loud bang makes the whole house tremble. We both look towards the sound, and to my surprise I see Roderick standing by the entrance. The wolf is out of breath and a little sweaty, as if he had been running for a while. Finally found you, you little rat. He has an angry expression on his face as he enters the building. Me and Hugo just stare at him, none of us daring to move an inch until the dog... Shit! Hugo tries to grab the smoke bombs that he carries in his back pocket, but as, but as he's about to throw them, my instincts kick in and I hold his arms tight. Puppy? Hugo looks at me with a devastated expression, which soon turns to anger. But before he can do anything, the wolf launches at him and pins him to the ground. The dog struggles, but as I well know, breaking free from Roderick's iron grip is impossible. Eventually, after a few minutes of struggle, he calms down and accepts his fate. Looks at me with a sad expression, I can't help but shiver. You're coming with me, and you! We'll talk about this later. Roderick says to me, but I can hardly process what he just told me. Did I really just do that? Did I really just betray the only lover that I've ever had? So you really are working for them now. You disappoint me, White. I think you would wag your tail for these bastards. But I know who you, but I know who you are, White. You can pretend to be a decent citizen all you want, but that's not you at all. Don't forget, White. You're mine. You don't belong with them. Fine, the wolf gets tired of Hugo running his mouth, so he decides to take the dog with him. Retrieve the painting, Runt. We meet up in Sir Addo's stall. The wolf musters his last order before taking Hugo with him. And as they leave, I remain there, there for at least half an hour before retrieving the painting. Hmm. 
Oh, my sweet painting! You have returned it to me! Oh, thank you so much, both of you! May the goddess you may give you good fortune! Addo seems happy to have his work back. As for me, I haven't said a word since Roderick arrested Hugo. I just don't know what to say at this point. Yes, Hugo was an asshole, but we used to be friends. More than friends. He taught me how to survive in these shitty streets. He was the first person who seemed interested in me. He was the first with whom I shared my... body with. So even if he's an asshole, I shouldn't have betrayed him like that. Anyway, gentlemen, it was a pleasure, but I'm quite tired. So, if you'll excuse me... Sir Otto waves at us and returns to his boat, taking all his paintings with him. Once he's gone, Roger turns his gaze to me, looking at me with a puzzled expression. You knew him, didn't you? I nod, not wanting to explain my past to Roderick, or to anyone for that matter. I just want to forget. You did the right thing, Runt. You know that, right? For the second time, you've demonstrated your worth to me, Runt. It be, it's not so easy, okay? He was my friend, and I betrayed him. What does that say about me? I'm not trustworthy. I'm trash. We both remain in silence after, after I finish my ranting. I don't even know if he cares about anything I just said, but I wanted to get it off my chest. We can't change what we did or who we used to be. The past will always be there. The mistakes we've made will always be there, haunting you until the day you die. So all there's left to do is go forward and try to atone. You're the king's retainer now. You belong by his side. Same as me. Same as a callus and even that moron almond. Believe what you must, but I think you've earned your spot. You are one of us. With that said, the wolf walks past me and pats my shoulder. Also, you're on the right side of the law this time. You're given a second chance to make things right. Don't waste it with self-pity. I listen carefully to his words. I know he means well by them and that he's somehow trying to cheer me up, but that knot in my stomach hasn't vanished yet. But still, there's something I must do and I can't delay it any further. So, putting on my bravest face, I follow behind the wolf. I've always felt a certain disdain towards the church. Maybe it's because my mom never inspired me to be a believer, or rather because homosexuality is a punishable sin according to them, which is kind of fucked up considering I am one. One second, y'all. Water time. In any case, I'm here to discuss if I'm going to be- if I'm going to the sacred garden or if I'll rot away in the great void. Oh, yeah, I keep clicking on the damn codex. Codex needs to be a little- a guy- Hey, uh, I think the codex needs to be a bit smaller. It takes up quite a big portion of the bottom part of the screen. All right. Eh, I've never been in such a big temple before. Most of the towns I've been in are quite small compared to this. I say to Roderick, making small conversation with him. This is the second biggest in the entire continent. What's the first? The one situated in Zygma, the capital of Col the capital of Columnia. It's the second biggest city in the Canaan Empire, and only, it's only populated by church members. In the middle of it, an even bigger temple was built hundreds of years ago. You sure know a lot about, about the church, Roderick. Are you a believer yourself? It's basic knowledge, Runt. Now shut your trap. People are trying to pray. He was right. Some of the visitors were giving us nasty looks, so I decided to be respectful and remain quiet. Roderick has kept his arms crossed the entire time we've been here, and in a severe, with a severe expression on his face. And the severe expression on his face makes me wonder if he also feels uncomfortable being here. Or maybe that's how he always is and I'm reading too much into it. Excuse me, brothers. Father Flavio will now meet with you. If you could, please follow that hall to the left. A small dog nun calls for us and indicates where we must go. It took a good hour of waiting, but it seems like they're finally giving us the time of day. Let's get this over with. Roderick says as he starts walking in the direction the nun indicated. Oh, hello there. We enter a small room that has a few benches and a smaller altar, so I'm guessing this is one. This one is used for the more private ceremonies. By the altar, a dog in robes is waiting for us with a smile. Father Flavio, I presume. Ah, oh, my sons, I must apologize to have kept you waiting. There was some business that I had to attend to, but that doesn't matter now. Please tell me. Tell me what may I? Father Flavio's eyes land on me, and for a second, it seems like he saw a ghost. I barely noticed it, but it was there for sure. Do for you. The man seems friendly enough, but something about his forced smile gives me the heebie-jeebies. That doesn't matter now. I have to make this man. I have to make. I have to make this man answer as many questions as I can. I can't waste this opportunity. Father, Fl Father Flavio, I presume. Before I can even speak, Roderick jumps into the conversation, which is something I honestly didn't expect him to do. Yes, my son, I am. And you two are. My name is Sir Roderick, and this man beside me is Sir Eli. 
We are both King Ariolus' retainers. We appreciate your time, so we won't waste it. Oh, Sir Roderick, no need for such formalities. Take all the time you need. Although, when I was told a messenger from the king was coming to pay us a visit, I was not expecting such guests as yourselves. So he knew we were coming. But how? No one aside from me, Roderick, and the king himself knew about this. If I had known, I would have made some tea. The man giggles at his own comment, keeping his eyes fixated on Roderick. I ask again, though, what may I do for you, my sons? As a concerning matter that has been brought to our attention, the king wishes to know if the church knows about this. Oh, and what might that be? Roderick slaps my back and pushes me forward, giving me the okay to talk. I feel like such a kid right now. Father, we're here to discuss this. I take the medal out of my pocket and show it to him. The man seems unfazed by it, as he keeps a smile still. Did you come to return it? How kind of you, Brother Eli. No, we're not here to return it. We want to know what this is. It's a church medal. Are you familiar with the way our magnificent, magnificent organization works? Can't say I am. Allow me to explain, then. Oh, all right. Uh, looks like we're out of time, y'all. All right, perfect place to pause it before he launches into an explanation. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.